things here in Maria, which is the island across from Tahiti in French Polynesia. One of the first things that we're studying is the evolution of bacteria with corals. And we know a lot about the evolution of corals, but we don't know much about the evolution or co-evolution, that is the evolution of two groups, the evolution of the bacteria and the corals together. And we know that corals form relationships with bacteria just like they do in our human gut, but we're not really sure what the rules are. So by studying the evolution of these two groups, we can answer some of the questions about how microbes might benefit their hosts. And since we know that corals are declining around the world, if we can better understand what the microbes might be contributing to those hosts, we might be able to better predict which coral species will do well or worse in our future climate. There seems to be no relationship between what kind of corals die. That is, you can't say all of these corals are dying around the world. There doesn't seem to be an evolutionary reason for why some groups of corals are doing poorly while others are doing really well. And so we think that we would learn a lot about why some corals fare better during climate change by understanding the sum of all of its parts. That is the bacteria and the animal and its algal symbiont. So if we can look at all three of those, we provide a holistic understanding of how organisms have evolved in their environment and how that evolution of the entire group contributes to its success or its failure under certain environmental conditions. People who live on the coasts, the Polynesians who live in Tahiti, they are most directly impacted when the reefs decline, when there's a hurricane that destroys their fishing grounds, when the corals bleach and all the animals that normally live on that reef have to relocate. Those are the direct connections to the people. And we want to make sure that they're buffered against these increasing number of extreme events that occur on reefs and are going to continue to occur probably for a good long time until we can stem the tide of climate change or reverse it to some degree. elders already started, you know, years and years ago by saying when we think of conservation of an island, we cannot think only about the island because island and ocean are together and uh, they, are, they are not separated and when you think about conservation, you have to think about the two together and uh, it's from the tip of the mountain all the way to the reef, even beyond the reef, so we have to care for that. It's, it's the first protection, it's like a lay. It's like a big lay that's a, a big foundation that protects the island, but it's also the way where the place where the resources are. So it's, uh, it's very important. In the future, this reef will disappear. We will disappear with it. I think, I, I want that. But our care is not to have this reef disappear. The 
it's part of the spirit, you know. Those islands are surrounded by coral reef, and those coral reefs, it's part of the spirit of the islands. It's part of the shape of the island. It's part of the beauty of the islands. And I think this will be, to me, what will sort of be lost first, and will be lost in terms of um, emphasizing the the beauty of those islands. I think I think that would be the first drama. Then, for sure, the next drama is all what we call ecosystem services. That, to me, that will be also the classical one, like the protection, the food that delivers the reef, and some of those aspects. If we lose reefs here in Morea and in Hawaii, they're both high islands. That means there's a lot of uh, flat land just on the coast, but it goes up very steep. Here in Morea, you can see there's no building up on the hills because there's an actual law about how high you can build. That reef gone, this whole coastal area will erode out. That will be gone. So these big storms will come across the Pacific and usually what would happen is the barrier reef out there will diminish the storm energy coming onto the land and without that barrier, that physical barrier there to do that, that full storm energy will come onto the land and there will be a lot of damage in the near coastal environment. That means there's less places to live, there's no food, there's no land that's livable any longer. So what that really translates to, there'll be no tourism because nobody will come to a place where there's nowhere to stay and there's no fish to eat. And so what will happen is then the economy of this island will be radically diminished. These are huge issues that we're talking about. And I think if we don't stop these, this radical overuse of our resources, we are gonna go down that road.